Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a really good match here for you. Of course, with the most powerful rain team in existence. As always, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Less than 60% of the people who watch these videos are subscribed, and it would help out on my way to 300k. Uh, anyway, looking at today's matchup here, looks like my opponent is also working with a rain team. We see the Pelipper, uh, things like Kilowattril. A little interesting matchup here, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So to start things off, I'm feeling like the, you know, the schoolyard grass looks like it could use a little watering. So I decided to toss out the boy Nigel to get that drizzle going. Uh, team does rely on the rain quite a bit here. And unfortunately for me, he actually ends up leading off with the Kilowattril. So it turns out that this Pokemon is really bad for my team. However, I do have myself a ground ass type Magneton. So I'm thinking this is my only real check to this thing. I can just go into uh, the Sandy Shocks here, take a nice little Thunder or Volt switch, and then you have a good time. Unfortunately, this he just straight up throws Weather Ball right at my face. Has the Weather Ball Kilowattril, predicts the switch into the ground type turn one, and catching balls to your face right on turn one of the match does not feel good, especially because he was able to use my reign against me, and that is really bad. That was what I thought was my kind of only answer to this thing, and now I've just got to bring out the bush. So, of course, Swift Swim Bear Tick does swim like Michael Phelps out here, so I can easily outspeed and go for the Icicle Crash. I know that he does have some answers to switch into this, but I'm not really in a position to try to make any crazy predictions here. So I just go right for the easy play here and just kind of adapt and overcome and see what he decides to do. So uh, in comes Orthworm, which is also an annoying ass Pokemon for this team. Um, it's super defensive. It has a lot of good switch ins and I can't obviously click Earthquake because he's going to eat that shit up. So the Ice Cold Crash does nothing. And now at least I figure I can get a free switch into the Pelipper. I know that this thing can't really touch me if it decides to go for the Shed Tail. Uh, that is not going to be great. But I bring in Nigel, he comes in on his own reign, and he actually ends up going for the Metal Burst there, which is going to fail. Uh, so that's actually pretty solid. I was really hoping he didn't click the Shed Tail there, as now this allows me a nice little chance to hit the Hydro Pump in the rain. Not a whole lot wants to take that, and I was actually hoping he would stay in with the Orthworm, just so I could get some quality chip on that thing, because I know it's going to be a pain in the ass later. Uh, actually decides to bring in his Tumbleweed, and of course Hydro Pump misses, which would have done a decent chunk to this thing, not the most defensive bush. But the good news is, I can just stay and go for a Hurricane outspeed and likely take care of this thing. However, he's actually going to switch, and unfortunately for me, he ends up going right back into the Kilowattril. I had the Ice Beam right there, um, but I wasn't sure that, that I was actually going to knock it out. So the Hurricane does hit the Kilowattril. I get some chip on this thing, knock it down to nearly half. Uh, but that does actually activate its wind power, which is kind of funny. And now I'm in a position where I have literally nothing that can switch into a Kilowattril, and I basically just have to decide to sack something. Now I decide to go into the Bear Tick, uh, because out of the two Swift Swimmers that I have, this thing is least valuable, because it doesn't do much uh, to the Orthworm. So I decide if anything has to die here, it's going to be the Bear Tick. I want to keep um, the Focus Sash on the Tatsugiri in the back. So unfortunately, Bear Tick go does go down here. And what are you going to do against a well-played Kilowattril? Had I clicked Ice Beam on that switch, I would have been in a great position for the, the rest of this match. But as a wise man once said, it's fucking way she goes. So, now I get a free switch into whatever I would like. I, of course, have the Swift Swim on the Floatzel in the back. And this thing is an absolute monster. It gets access to Wave Crash in this generation. And pair that in the rain in a Choice Band. And literally nothing can switch into this thing. I go for the Wave Crash. He actually ends up switching into the Water-type Tauros. And that thing is not safe. Nothing is safe against the Water Wings out here doing damage with the Wave Crash. I know that I'm able to outspeed here, but he is actually going to end up going for the Endure, and I'm just actually hoping it's not a Speed Berry he's working with here. So, of course, one more Wave Crash. He's going to leave it with one, and it turns out that he's actually going to go ahead and get an Attack Boosting Berry. Uh, this is actually an interesting set with the Kudchu. Uh, you have the potential to go ahead and eat the Berry twice, and this is a very scary Pokemon here. Stubble... Uh, is going to get that attack boost, and the rain actually goes away. So that is actually kind of unfortunate, but it turns out that Floatzel actually outspeeds naturally. Uh, so we don't need no rain today. We're looking dry as shit out here, but one more wave crash is going to take care of the Tauros. And that is a pretty large threat out of the way. The nice little, the nice critical hit when it's on 1 HP. I swear, it never happens when you need it. So, uh, But down goes the Tauros, and at least I'm in a pretty decent position here. I also know... Even though I don't have my rain up, I don't even have to switch into my Pelipper. I know that he has a Pelipper, so there's going to be rain to be had. So I do want to make sure that I conserve this Floatzel. It's kind of my best uh, answer at this point. So in comes the Orthworm on the free switch. Without the rain, I'm not feeling super confident about just going for a Wave Crash. These things have like 9,000 defense, and Orthworm is just an overall menace. So uh, I just go back into Nigel. I know that this thing doesn't have much that it can hurt me with. I do get up back the Drizzle, and he actually ends up going for the Shed Tail this time. So... 
Uh, it does bring him below half, so he's not going to be able to shed tail once more. But what is unfortunate is because now I have to fucking deal with this damn fake-ass Zapdos once again. And behind a shed tail substitute, this thing is super annoying. The, the substitute actually just floats mid-air, which is, is certainly something. So I don't have anything that can switch into this that's kind of been the theme for this entire match. So I basically have to let Nigel go down. Uh, I'm fine with that because I do still have the Tatsugiri in the back plus the Floatzel, and then the Grafaii in the back pocket. So, I figured I would be fine having this amount of rain up, and that thing didn't provide me too much value anyway, because now I get a switch into kind of the only thing that can take care of this, and that is Focus Sash Tatsugiri here. So, I know that I can easily break this thing substitute, and then I can bring in Floatzel to outspeed later. So, he actually ends up going for the Tailwind, which is surprisingly kind of good for me, because that means that Tatsugiri actually can kind of pressure to take care of this thing, so... You get that wind power, not going to make too much of a difference here as I just try to drown this stuffed animal. Uh, somehow still floating up there and he's going to break the substitute. So, uh, with my Focus Sash still intact, I know that he's likely just going to stay in here and go for the Thunder. And that means that I can finally, it's going to be some fucking electric bird soup tonight, boys. This Kilowattril has been an absolute pain. Uh, but my best option is just to go ahead and click Surf here. So he does go for the Thunder. Um, interesting to note, Kilowattril in the rain is so damn powerful, it's actually kind of insane. So I live with the Focus Sash here, and then I am able to hit him with a Surf, and down goes the Wattril. So, he did get up the Tailwind, which is something I do have to worry about uh, for the next few turns here. Even with the Swift Swim, uh, things, could get, things could get hairy. So, in comes the Tumbleweed. Now, of course, this thing is Wind Rider, and is going to get that nice little attack boost on the Tailwind being up. And plus, with the Tailwind being up, it is actually faster than my little piece of sushi. And uh, a Tumbleweed flying in the wind is nothing to take lightly, I swear to God. Goes for the Rapid Spin on the kill, uh, which is actually a great play, because now he gets an extra speed boost. And that Tumbleweed is about fast as shit right now. There's never been a faster Tumbleweed. So the only answer that I have to this, and actually could potentially be an answer to the rest of this match, is my Grafaii. So this is actually an interesting set on my boy E.T. here. So the idea is, if I go for a Swagger, I give him a plus two attack boost while confusing him, I activate my Mirror Herb item, uh, which gives me the plus two attack boost, and gives me my Unburden ability, which doubles my speed. So, I know that I can take one attack from this thing. He goes for the Power Whip, does a shit ton of damage, and I go for the Swagger and straight up miss, which... I forgot that Swagger has such such shit accuracy. It's like 85%, which is extremely annoying, um, and so that really sucks. Turns out, actually, he doesn't want to miss his Power Whip. Goes for the Infestation instead, and being a little Poison Boy over here, I'm actually able to live that. So I go for the Swagger again. I actually hit it this time. Praise the Lord Arceus, and now I'm able to both confuse him, give him a plus two attack boost, and then activate my Mirror Herb. So the way that works is if you're in on a Pokemon that gets a setup, uh, you actually are able to take it, and then I'm able to use up my Mirror Herb, which is now going to activate my Unburden. I am now plus two attack, doubled speed, and a monkey that's having a good time. So, um, I'm deciding, I'm just going to go for the uh, either Acrobatics or Knockoff. I'm honestly thinking that this thing might Terra here. So I end up going for the Knockoff. It turns out it has the reduced Dark-type damage berry, which is like, what else could be going wrong for me in this match? Uh, however, it actually just ends up killing it anyway. So Grafia is an absolute beast of that plus two attack and down goes the bush. And now I'm faster than like everything because their tailwind is gone and it's looking pretty good for our little eye eye friend over here. So in comes the Pelipper. Now against the Pelipper at plus two attack, I know that my only chance to kill this thing depending on the set uh, is to go for the Terra Poison and then Poison Jab. Getting that extra stab should push it to the point uh, where this Pelipper dies. He actually ends up switching the Pelipper out and brings in the Orthworm, which is absolutely nightmare material because this thing with the amount of health it has, had I just gone for an Acrobatics there, I think two should be able to knock it out. So I do go for the Terra here, um, get a little extra poison to fail on this Steel-type, and Orthworm still being an absolute dickhead to play against, literally. Um, so the Poison Jab, of course, does not work, and now I have a situation where um, am I able to take care of this thing with this amount of health? I have... The ability to click knockoff, and as you're going to see, I actually end up clicking acrobatics instead. The reason for this is because for some reason I thought that this orthworm had its item knocked off already. And if it did not have an item, knockoff is going to be pretty similar power. Go for the acrobatics, it is not quite enough to kill. Um, and that is definitely an error on my end. I didn't see any leftover recovery, so that's why I kind of thought that I had the item knocked off. Um, but I believe, had I gone for the knockoff there, that actually would have killed the Orthworm, and that is a, an incredibly huge 
misplay on my end that essentially could cost me the match here. So uh, that was dumb. I, I click acrobatics, not very effective, but I figured, you know, I don't have my item at plus two attack, I think in maybe either kills. So it does not kill because Orthworm is straight up defensive as tits. Uh, and now my last Pokemon is going to be the Floatzel. So I'm able to come in, go for the wave crash and take care of it. Um, but he does still have the Pelipper in the back. And interesting to note, um, his Pelipper does not even have Drizzle. So I don't really know if it's supposed to be a rain team. He has Thunder and Weather Ball in the Kilowattro, but not a Drizzle Pelipper. So quite interesting. Um, so I'm not able to get that Wave Crash damage boosted with the rain. Uh, but still, it's not going to be able to knock it out. As it looks like this thing's pretty defensive. So that is going to be the end of the match there. And sometimes the games come down to a misplay. And that's just kind of how Pokemon goes. But still a really fun match. Uh, it actually ended up being still pretty close. There's some fun strategies going on, and you got to appreciate the game. So go, go check out my opponent. His link is actually in the description. Uh, he does post Wi-Fi battles as well. And hey, leave a comment. I do read all the comments, and I appreciate all the support. It sucks when games come down to, you know, bad plays on my end, but that's, that's just kind of the game we play. So again, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.